Swift Stars. In this video, we're going to learn to create clickable rating stars using a property observer and updating the image and image tint of a button collection. Now, once we demonstrate this technique, you'll apply what you've learned in a challenge to update the stars shown in the spot review table view cells. And of course, we'll show a solution to the challenge right after. Time for some all-star swifting. Now, as we begin, all of our work is going to be in the review table view controller. That's where our star buttons are. But here, we'll create an outlet collection instead of just a single outlet for our first star button. Now, an outlet collection is an array of IB outlets, but it's super useful because if you need to reach all of the outlets in a collection, you can just iterate through the array. You create an IB outlet collection the same way you create an IB outlet by control dragging from the interface builder item into your code. But then instead of using the default outlet setting under connection, you instead select outlet collection. Now this will set up an array of just one item, but then we'll drag back from the little circle in our code next to the outlet collection line back into each of the buttons that we want to add to this collection. Then we'll control drag and attach the other four buttons to this collection. Now that star button collection will be an array of UI buttons. Like any array, it's zero indexed. So the first button is at index zero. The last one is index four. Then we'll create an IB action star button pressed. We'll attach this IB action to each of the buttons in our star button collection so that the action will run if any of those star buttons are pressed. And now our star buttons also have a tag property. We set these zero to four when we set up our user interface in a previous video. So in the IB action, we'll simply set the new rating property to the tag of the sender or the button that was clicked plus one. Now this will give us a rating from one to five depending on the button that was pressed. Clicking button zero is rating one, clicking button four is rating five. Then how do we update the buttons? Well, we could do it right in this function, but instead let's do it in a property observer. It'll give us a bit more of a reuse advantage that I'll show in a minute. First, at the top of the review detail table view controller, we'll create a rating property and initialize it to zero. Then in did set, we'll go through all of the buttons in the star button collection using a for loop. We'll check the tag. If it's less than the current rating, then we'll set the star to the star.fill, that's the filled in star. If it's greater, then the review hasn't yet reached that review level, so we'll just set it to the regular star. That's the outline star with no fill. And then we'll update the button's image. Now we don't access its dot image property. Instead, we have to use the dot set image method for a UI button, passing in a UI image. That's what this code does here. And notice we're using system name here for creating our UI image. That gives us access to the SF symbols images that are built into iOS. That's where our star dot fill and our star is. Now the set image method also has a for parameter for the button state. We'll just use dot normal for all of our buttons. Now we'll also want to set the tint color. We'll use system red if we're using the star fill image so that it shows up in red, or we'll use the dark text color on our star so that the outline shows up as the dark text color. And we don't need this print statement here, but it's nice to have it in so that initially we can see the property observer working in real time just by looking down at the console. Now this is very important. We do need to use this rating property, which is a property of the review table view controller class to update the rating property in our review object. Now, one more critical thing, when we declare and initialize our review property, the property observer doesn't run for initialization. So when we set it to zero here, this code in did set does not run. So in order for our buttons to show up with any rating value that's already been set, we're gonna need to set rating to review.rating. That will call the did set, and we'll do this in update user interface. Now, this is why we chose to use a property observer. Anytime we change the rating value, whether it's an update user interface or our IB action, we automatically update the button collection. Cool, let's code this up. So now let's create our first outlet collection. We're gonna do that in review table view controller. I'm gonna option click on the main storyboard to get in the side-by-side -side assistant editor mode. You might have to dig deeper in the document outline to actually reach the button that you wanna get. So it's inside the table view section, inside the table view cell, inside of the content area. In fact, since we keep indenting to the right, I'm gonna click on the edge of the document outline and drag it to the right to make the document outline wider. And there we go, it's right inside of the stack view. I'm also noticing for some reason I've got a broken link right here for my button's background view. Hopefully you don't have that, but I'm going to go ahead and drag from the open circle over into the view where that's supposed to be connected to. Again, ignore this if you've got your button's background view filled in. We haven't used that outlet anyway. That's for a future video. And now I'm going to control drag from this very first button here, and I'll put this right below all of the other IB outlets that are inside of my review table view controller. I'm going to pull down the connection menu and where it says outlet, I'm going to instead select outlet collection. That's what we want. I'm going to name this star button collection. We can see that they're all UI buttons and click connect. Now this has created an outlet collection, which is an array of outlets with just one object or just one outlet in it. That's the button I control dragged from, but 
If I click and drag, not control drag, from this filled in circle next to the star button collection line that I just created in my Swift file, I can create a connection rubber band, and I'll release this rubber band on the button that's just below the button that I used to create the original star button collection. That adds the second button to the outlet collection, so now this array has two UI buttons in it, and you can tell they're both connected because if I hover my cursor over the connection circle to the left of the star button collection line, do you see how these are highlighted on the main storyboard? You see the little call out below them? That shows that these two buttons are part of that collection that I'm hovering over. And then I'll just drag and release the rubber band to connect these three additional buttons one at a time. And if I hover my cursor over the filled in circle when I'm done, I can see all five are selected. So the star button collection is a collection of an array of UI button outlets. See the brackets around the type UI button here? That's it. Now let's scroll down and create an IB action for our first button. We'll make space just before the last curly in the file. I'll control drag again for my first button. We'll call this star button pressed. Make sure you pull down type and change that from any to UI button. And then we'll drag and attach this to the remaining four buttons. So now whenever any of these buttons are clicked, that button becomes the sender that has triggered the execution of this function. Each of those buttons has a tag attribute. So if we want to figure out which button specifically was pressed, we could just refer to sender.tag and we'll get the tag number. And just to show you that, remember, all these guys were tagged. So if I close my Swift file, just look at the main storyboard, take a look over in the attributes inspector. And as I click all these different buttons, we can see the tag changes from zero through four. So now let's return to the review table view controller. And what we're going to do in the star button pressed function is we'll set a property we'll call rating. And we'll set the value of this property based on the tag of the button that you clicked. Now we haven't created this property yet, so let's scroll up to the top of the class. And just below the other variables, we'll add this with var rating equals zero. Now we'll eventually add a property observer to this, but let's scroll back down and finish coding our rating button pressed function. And in here we'll say rating equals sender. Notice the type is UI button, so this function is attached to UI buttons. Sender refers to the button that was pressed, so we can use dot notation to get to all of the sender's attributes. And so that lets us say dot tag plus one. So the tags are from zero to four. That'll set the rating one through five, depending on which button was pressed. Now here's the genius of property observers. If we attach a property observer to this rating property and we use did set, then we can have code execute whenever the rating is set, meaning that it's been changed, meaning that we could have that code run whenever this line here is done executing. So let's scroll back to the top of our rating variable declaration and we'll add right after the zero here, a set of curlies. And then inside we'll add a did set and another set of curlies. And then we'll loop through all of the buttons in the collection. And we do that by saying for star button, in star button collection open and close curlies look what happens if you option click on star button it's a ui button what happens if you option click on star button collection it's an array of ui buttons see how it's inside of brackets cool that's exactly what we want to do we want to loop through this array of ui buttons one button at a time then on the first line of the for loop we'll figure out which image name we need for this button in our button array so we'll hold this image name as a string in a value named image name so we'll say let image name equals we either want star.fill or star. We'll use a ternary operator, so we'll put parentheses around this just to make it easier to read. Then we'll add the expression star button.tag is less than rating. That's going to be either true or false. Then with the ternary operator, we say question mark. And if this is true, we're going to pass in the string star.fill. That's all lowercase, colon. Otherwise, if it's false, we'll pass in the string star, all lowercase. On the next line, we'll use our image name string to set the image for our star button. So we'll say star button dot. And unfortunately, we can't just set the button's image property. We need to use the UI button set image method. So here it is in code completion. It needs a UI image and a state. So for the image, we'll call the UI image initializer open parens, then start typing system name, one word, lower camel case. We'll select this option that pops up in code completion that just accepts a single string. The string we'll pass in will be image name. That's the value we created above. And then for the UI control state, we'll just pass in dot normal. Then on the last line of the loop, we'll set the image's tint color to either red if it's star dot fill or dark text color if it's the empty star. And to do this, we'll start out by saying star button dot tint color. Now we can update the tint color property directly with a UI color. Now we'll use the ternary operator to choose the color. It'll have the same structure as the ternary operator we used in the first line. So I'll highlight that whole statement with its parentheses. Then I'll paste it down below after the equal sign, but after the question mark, instead of returning the string star.fill will return a UI color and that will be dot system red lower camel case.
Then after the colon, if star button dot tag is not less than rating, we want to return dot dark text, lower camel gaze. Then outside of the for loop, after it's closed curly, we don't need a print statement, but I'll put one in anyway, just so that we can see that this property observer is updating every single time we change the rating. So we'll say print in between parentheses and in between double quotes, greater than, greater than, new rating, string interp, rating. Then very important on the line below, we want to set review dot rating equal to our rating value. Now, unfortunately, the way property observers work is this did set code it does not execute when the view controller first loads and rating is initialized to zero. We need to actually update the rating value to get it to perform this code in did set. So to make sure that our star button collection buttons are showing the right image, all we need to do is inside of update user interface, add this as the last line. And I knew this was coming, so I'm gonna highlight and delete this to do comment first. And then I'll just enter rating equals review dot rating. So in this line, that means that rating is updated. And when rating is updated, the property observer observes that you did set the rating. So the did set code runs and our star buttons are gonna be updated properly. Nice. I believe this calls for a build and run to test out our app. No errors. Hammer time! Here comes our app. Let's click on Pino's Pizza. I'm gonna click on this first review. And look at this, I can start clicking these star buttons from the left. One, two, three, four, five. All of them lit up. Click down to two. Only the first two light up. Click the last one. All five light up. We can see the different changes are showing up in the print statement of the console. Nice work. Let's save this. Hey, we don't have any changes yet in our table view cell. We gotta do that. But when we do click on that table view cell, we can see the results were saved. We can see that they show up properly in our review table view controller. If I change the rating to three star, Pinos does not deserve three stars, but I'll do that anyway. Click on save, then click the table view cell, head back. We see three stars are showing. We'll correct that to five stars. Click on save. I'm gonna click on the review below this, add a four star rating, save that, that's looking good. And how about if we click on the rating button, add a new rating in here, and oh, let's put in a rating for a bogus pizza lover. The review title will be, you call that pizza? And the review will say, where's the ketchup? This person gives Pinos no stars, they click on save, click back on that terrible review cell, we see no stars are still showing up. So let's cancel out of this. I think it's time for a challenge to make sure we've updated those spot review table view cells so that they show stars too. So here's your challenge. Update the stars to show the rating in the spot detail table view cell. Now you'll likely find it very helpful to use the for loop that you just wrote inside the rating property observer in review table view controller as a template or a guide. And here's some hints. The stars in the table view are images, they're not buttons, so you'll need to create a collection of those five image views, not five buttons like we did before. Name this star image collection. Creating an image collection should work the same way you created a button collection though. And instead of using the dot set image method on a button, you're gonna be setting the dot image property of each image view in your star image view collection. And you'll set that to either star.fill or star. I bet you can do this. Why don't you pause, give it your best shot, and let's look at a solution. So let's first head over to spot review table view cell and we need to create our outlet collection. So option click on main storyboard. Here we are in the assistant editor. Things are a little crowded inside of that cell though. It might be a little tough to search through the document outline to find the exact image view that you want. So feel free to click on the right edge of the document outline and make that a little bit wider. I've got the first of my five stars in here right inside of the stack view. So I'm gonna control drag from that star image view and just below my other two IB outlets, I'm gonna let go of the rubber band, but very important, you wanna change the connection type, pull down there and change outlet to outlet collection. You can see the type is UI image view, so you've got that selected properly. And for the name, why don't we call this star image collection? We'll click connect. Now we see Xcode has written the line of code for us. We can see with the brackets around UI image view that it is indeed a collection of image views. And now you can click on this filled in circle, drag to create a connection rubber band, releasing on the next star image view you wanna to add to the collection and repeating this until all five image views are in your star image collection. Once they're all connected, if you hover your cursor over the filled in circle, you should see all five images highlighted in the main storyboard. Nice. And just to double check, if I click on each of these stars and take a look over in the attributes inspector, I can see that they all have tags from zero down to four. And remember, we added those in a previous video when we were first creating this user interface. Now I'm gonna head to spot table view cell and right in here in the did set area for my review property underneath where I set these two labels, I'm gonna add a for loop that's gonna go through all of the different images in my star image collection. So I'll say for star image in star image collection, open and close curlies. If you option click on the star image collection, it is in fact an array of UI image views. And if you option click on star image, 
it is a singular UI image view. Nice. So now let's hop back over to our review table view controller. We'll find the for loop we've already written to update the star buttons that's inside of the did set clause of the review property. And we'll highlight that for loop and we'll return to spot review table view cell and we'll paste it just below where we're going to work. And we'll use this as a template as we update the new star image collection to show the right images with the right tinting based on the review rating for this table view cell. First, I'll highlight this line that determines the correct string that we need. That's this one here that starts with let image name, and I'll copy it, and I'll paste it after my for loop above. Then we need to change star button dot tag to star image dot tag, and we'll change rating to review dot rating. We're not going to copy this second line here because we're going to set our image by just changing the image property. We can do that with an image view. So all we need to do here is to say star image dot image equals UI image open parens. And as we start to type in system name here, we want to select this first option that just has the string. And for the string, we're going to put in image name. That's the constant we created in the line above. Then finally, let's copy the third line. We'll paste it above, but instead of changing the star button tint color, we're changing star image tint color. Star button tag is going to become star image tag and rating is going to be review dot rating. But that's it. See how the structure changed between these two for loops? Pretty much the same. So now we can highlight and delete this star button collection for loop. We don't need that anymore. And we're ready to build and run and test out our solution. And here we go. No errors. Hammer time. Here comes our app. Let's click over to Pino's Pizza. And hey, look at that. We see the rating stars all lit up. Let's change this guy that's got no taste in pizza. We'll click on the one that says you call this pizza. How many stars should we add? Click one. Click four. Click back to one. We'll click on save, and hey, there it goes. A little one star is showing up. This is fantastic. Add another review. Five stars this time. How about triangle slices are great too. Love the sauce. Click on save, and look at that. Another review is added. The stars are showing up perfectly. You can go get yourself a slice. Unless, of course, like Ben Wyatt of Parks and Rec, you're an aficionado of the Cal Zone. Keep at it, Swifter.